Hello, y'all. Um, I hope that you're doing okay. Maybe you're not because we're in the middle of a pandemic and I know a lot of people are isolated at home or have to work um, jobs in a very scary environment um, and all of that. And there's just a lot of fear and uncertainty. Um, but I wanted to make a little video um, because I recently got two asks about um, altars um, because I have an altar in my home and I got two people um, who were curious about having a home altar so I thought I'd make a video about it because I don't know that there's a better time to set up a home altar if you don't already have one than in the middle of a crisis that prevents us from getting to our faith communities um, so that um, spirituality at home is more important than ever. Um, so yeah, one of, one of the Anons um, sent me this question. I believe I remember you mentioning a while back that you have a home altar. If you're okay with me asking, what sorts of things do you include in yours slash how do you utilize it? I just started one in light of spending so much time praying at home, given the stay at home orders, and have a few things with it, like my rosary and a necklace I was given at my confirmation, but I'm also curious about how others approach praying from their prayer space. Um, and then the other Anon said, I feel called to make my own altar and do simple offerings from home. Is that okay? If so, do you have any ideas on how I might do that? So yeah, let's take a look at my altar. Um, I also, oof, before I show y'all mine, I do want to promo, signal boost, whatever, um, the podcast episode that came out last month of my podcast called Blessed Are the Binary Breakers. And I did a special episode on sacred spaces where multiple um, trans and non-binary folks sent in their stories about what sacredness means to them and like half of them talked about having a personal altar um, and that's for people of various um, religious backgrounds. We had some Christians, some pagans, some Jewish folks all talking about altars um, and what it means to them to have that sort of worship space at home. So that I think was actually really helpful for me when thinking about what my altar is all about. All right, my cat has joined us. She often does join me when I'm praying at my altar. <laughs> um, but here's my altar. Let me kind of zoom out so you can see all of it at once. Um, it's in a corner of, oh, I'm sorry, stepped on her tail. Um, it's in a corner of the craft room um, where I do my work. I've got my rocks, my bulletin board, my embroidery. Um, this is part of it too, um, this image of the Holy Family. Um, this embroidery I did um, about sort of queer figures in the Bible um, that I'm really proud of and that I definitely sort of look to that when I'm praying and remember all my queer ancestors in scripture. And the same thing goes for these icons. Um, a lot of them are I see as my queer ancestors. Um, um, these saints who um, exhibited deep love for each other, or some gender nonconformity and the like. Um, not all of them. They're not. They're not all necessarily read as queer. Um, but I have some sort of connection to them or draw inspiration from them, um, and look to them for guidance in my day-to-day -day life. Because yeah, um, this idea of the community of saints is that um, when people die, they are not lost to us. Um, they don't go away from our lives. They live on. Um, and so we can continue to reach out to them and connect with them and have a real community and a real relationship with them. Um, death is not the end. So yeah, we can, we can reach out to them. Um, also near my altar, I have um, a lot of my sort of devotional books, my prayer books. Um, I also have um, stem tools. I'm autistic and it really helps me to um, stem to focus on things. So this is one of my favorites. It's a, a glitter jar that uh, a friend gave to me. So again, a lot of things on my altar have special, um, like, sentimental significance to me, um, so that when I pray while using this glitter jar, I think about, um, a friend group that I had back in Louisville of people who really inspire me and were meaningful to me, and it just reminds me to pray for them and hold them in my heart. Um, same with this rosary that I have. When I pray with it, I remember my friend Alicia, who made it for me. Um, she's not Catholic herself, but she was really um, interested in the idea of a rosary. And so we talked about it, and she made me one because I told her that 
Uh, I've always been intrigued by the idea of having a rosary that has different sizes and shapes and colors of beads so that each bead you pray sort of recenters you. Um, like it, it stands out, you know, you, you still do the thing with the rosary where you sort of fade into the prayers and you really become part of the prayer and your mind does sort of like not zone out, but like it, it takes on this new quality where you're focused on something besides like thought, if that makes sense. It's hard to explain if you've never prayed um, something repetitive like a rosary before. But I did like the idea of having different shapes to sort of stand out and remind me to really focus on each individual prayer as they come together into the wider prayer, if that makes sense. So that was really nice of her. I've got stones and crystals. I personally, I know some people find a lot of meaning in the um, individual crystals having different meanings, like um, crystals having different meanings, like one being good for communication, one revitalizing your energy, things like that. I personally... Um, don't, have not gotten very into that. Um, that's just not my thing. Um, for me, crystals um, just remind me of the beauty and the diversity of God's creation um, and connect me back to the earth from whence I come and to which I will return um, in a special way. And I just like touching them and looking at them. Again, touching things, tactile sensations and visual sensations sort of really help center me um, and help calm my body if it's um, overwhelmed while I'm trying to pray, things like that. Hi, Nerys. Um, I've got this. Oh, it's so much prettier in color. My friend Taylor, um, with whom I also have an episode, um, if you look for Taylor's episode in Blessed Are the Binary Breakers, you'll hear them um, talk with me. And in the Sacred Space episode, they did a reading for me, a tarot reading. Um, and they have been offering their friends during the, this time of crisis free readings. Um, using these special cards they have. Oh, I forget what they're called, but they're so gorgeous. Um, they're all beautifully designed. Um, and this is one of the cards they pulled for me. Hey, Nerys, I'm trying to make a video, little, little cat. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, go on my altar. Be, be part of the prayer, spill my rocks. Love it, love it, girl. Um, anyway, this is one of the cards that really stood out to me of the ones that Taylor drew for me. Um, just about direction, seeking seeking God's direction. I think we all could really use that. <laughs> I also have a, a, a poem that I pray with a lot. I've got my prayer notebook where I pray to God, obviously, because um, I find that writing out my prayer helps a lot. My pillow pet to help my knees when I, when I kneel. <laughs> Great. Really, really helps the aesthetic, huh? Having a pillow pet here. Um, this devotional I've been working on since Advent, the start of Advent. That's right, not the start of Lent, the start of Advent. I've been working on it for months. I'm actually very close to the end. I don't know what I'm going to do when I finish it because it has brought me so much um, wisdom and joy. Um, this thin little book by a Catholic nun about seeing the holy in the everyday is it's just beautifully written. I love it. I've also been working through Thomas Merton's Dialogues with Silence. Um, there's an image on each left page of something he drew and then a little meditation or prayer that he wrote. And some of them, it's kind of a swing and a miss. Some of them don't connect to me that much. And then some of them connect to me deeply and I pray with it for a, a, a long while. Um, I also try to read a bit of the Bible every night. I'm kind of going through a dry spell of trying to figure out which book of the Bible I want to go through next because I haven't been reading it in order. If anyone has suggestions for which one I should read next. I also tend to go through, like right now I'm using the Catholic Bible. I'll sometimes use CEB, NRSV with um, good notes in it. Um, I often have been using the NKJV, um, which isn't really from my faith tradition. My wife's mom got it for me. Um, but I really like the poetic language. Um, as someone who translates Hebrew and Greek, can read the Hebrew and Greek to an extent, um, I really like the KJV. Um, and it doesn't have footnotes to sort of distract me from the, the Bible part, which sometimes is helpful. So, anyway. I'm going to light the candles because I want to end this little video in prayer. But basically, I hope it's helpful to people. Um, I'll just light this one. I won't light all three. I often don't. Oh, if it wants to light. There you go. Um, so we can close this in prayer. 
But before closing in prayer, I want to go back to um, the, some of the specifics of the uh, the messages I got, the questions I got. One of them um, mentioned wanting to do simple offerings from home. Um, again, that's not something I personally have done much, but I'll find some links on what it means to offer offerings to God or to saints, or if they're not of a Christian background, to whatever divine forces they're talking about. Um, I think that's the idea of just leaving little things. Um, it can be flowers. Um, again, if you listen to that Binary Breakers episode of the Sacred Spaces, I know that um, um, someone who goes by the alias Deacon Phoebe um, talks about leaving little offerings like flowers to Mary. I think that's a beautiful way of just showing your devotion to God or to your saints or whatnot. Um, of saying, hey, I found these flowers outside in nature and I thought of you. Um, here you go. Um, as a way of sort of just connecting spiritually to them. Um, I would personally sort of stress that when you do little offerings to God, whatever it is, um, and this is, the, this is the Christian in me. If you're not of a Christian faith, ignore this. Your faith might say different things. But for a Christian, I want to stress God does not need food or sustenance from us. Um, so if you offer God like a bit of bread or something, um, just remember that God doesn't need that to survive or eat or whatnot. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do it. Uh, by all means, give God gifts. That's beautiful. But remember that um, we can only give to God what God first gave to us, right? If I make bread for God and I offer some to God, I'm. it's my way of showing gratitude for having the, the skills I need and the materials I need um, to make that bread and God's the one who gave me those things to begin with so just remember that and also I would stress uh, or I would suggest not thinking of your offerings in a sort of transactional way in a God I'm gonna give you some flowers and then you're gonna give me uh, the new job I need or you're gonna give me the peace I need as a transaction like you're paying God for prayer um, Christians um, don't think of prayer as transactional, as sort of a wishing well or a, or a, um, oh, or what, like Santa Claus, where if you be good, you get presents. If you be bad, you get coal from Santa. It's not like that with God. God is not um, a wishing well that you feed coins into and good things pop out. God offers the gifts God offers completely freely. You don't have to do anything to earn them. You don't have to pay God for them. Um, so if you give offerings to God or to one of the saints, do it out of gratitude and a desire for a relationship with them. Um, and it's a way of saying, hey, I see that. I see your presence and your activity in my life, and I just want to say that I am grateful for that. And so I'm offering you these flowers so that you can enjoy them with me, not because I'm hoping to get something out of you, if that makes sense. I said that I'm not really big on the whole leaving offerings thing, but I do have one example Nerese, baby. I'm busy. I know, I'll play with you soon. I do have one example of an offering um, on my altar. Um, this is something I cross-stitched um, for a project for a class in seminary. Um, it's uh, an image of David and Jonathan. Um, David and Jonathan, you know, from the Bible. Um, and I, I borrowed from the um, Latino Catholic um, uh, practice of making retablos, um, paintings or other pieces of art that may go um, on a, an altar in a church or else a personal altar as a symbol of thanks and gratitude to the saint um, that you see as having acted in your favor in your life. A lot of retablos um, are very much invested in everyday occurrences. There'll be things like, um, like Saint, um, I don't know, Saint Gemma. I was sick, um, with a cold and wasn't able to attend a thing, but then, thanks to your intervention, I got better and was able to attend the thing. So here's a painting, um, to show my thanks. That's what a retablo is. Um, so for me, I saw Saint, um, David and Saint Jonathan, um, at work in my life, um, when my now wife, um, back then, my, um, uh, my fiance and I, um, were living apart. We were in a long distance relationship for four years or five years. Uh, I think five years, goodness me, four and a half. Um, a long distance relationship. We only got to see each other like once a year. And there was one time when I really missed her and I decided to use a break 
that I had to drive from Louisville to Atlanta just to be with her for a weekend. And so I prayed to David and Jonathan um, to give me safety um, and comfort and to get to her safely and enjoy our time together. I chose them because they, um, to me, were a queer relationship who knew what it was like to, one, be long distance for a while, they often were apart, and two, um, be part of a relationship where at least one of the people in the relationship, in this case Jonathan, had a parent, his father saw, who was not very on board with their relationship. So I sewed this little cross stitch. It looks very simple, but it took me hours to make um, as, as a sort of um, sign of gratitude. And I keep it here um, with my altar just to remind me of that time um, and what they did for me. And so that, um, to remind me of my relationship with David and Jonathan and what it means to me and how I see their activity in my life. To me, a personal altar is such a wonderful place to really re-envision, reimagine your relationship with the divine um, or with spirituality. Um, because especially if you make a sort of ritual of it, you make a sort of, you put it into your routine where every day, um, every morning, every afternoon, every evening, you're gonna take a little time, even if it's just a few minutes, to kneel, to light some candles, um, to connect to the saints or to God. Um, if you make a ritual of it and you make it part of your life, you will see the fruits in your life. You will, um, you will notice that um, in times when stress or grief or um, anxiety would overwhelm you, you feel a little bit more nourished. Um, you have a, a little bit more um, energy or resources than you might have before. Not because it's a transaction thing where you're giving them something so they're giving you something, but just because when we form relationships with the divine or with our saints who can connect to the divine with us and for us, um, we're just, we're we're opening ourselves to receive the gifts that God so longs to lavish upon us. We are opening ourselves to the wisdom of the Spirit um, and all of that. So, yeah, I'm going to end this with a reading from the thing I've been reading so long um, um, that I think is pertinent to this. All right. Sometimes people belong to a church because they are afraid. It takes a great deal of conversion and a lot of dwelling in God to be in love rather than in fear. I like the story about a man who, while walking down a country road, meets an angel. The angel is carrying in one hand a bucket of water. In the other hand, she carries a flaming torch. When the man inquires of the angel what she is about, the angel answers, with this water, I'm going to quench all the fires of hell, and with this torch, I am going to burn down all the mansions of heaven, and then we are going to find out who really loves God. A wonderful story. It should be told in, to in churches the world over. Far too often we settle down in our church pews because we fear the great punishment or we long for the great reward. For people who are created in God's image, it would seem more appropriate to be there because we are in love. Perhaps we don't spend enough time dwelling in God to fall in love with God. I do want to say that if you got something out of this video, if you think the idea of starting up a little personal altar of your own is interesting, I love to see videos or pictures or just hear descriptions of people's altars um, or other little devotional spaces in your home. So by all means, send those my way. Uh, if you have more questions, send those my way um, or thoughts about, um, say you already have an altar or something and you want to talk about what you do at your altar um, or what you sort of get out of it, please, by all means, send that my way. You don't have to be Christian either. It can be any faith background. Um, I love hearing it all. Um, I think it's beautiful that we all have different ways of connecting to um, the divine, um, spirituality, a higher power, however you um, envision that for yourself. I love to hear about it. So at long last, that's it from me, for today at least. Um, please do what you can to keep yourself safe. Um, I pray for all of y'all every day um, from my altar. Um, 
um, I pray that the spirit of love and comfort and protection will unfold all of us um, and revitalize the earth that is so desperately in need of God's transformation and wisdom at this time and in all times. Um, so yeah, I'm praying for all of y'all and hoping the best for all of y'all. And just know that I'm always here for you if you need anything. Go in peace.